This is the plaintiff, Precious Dixon. She says she's an actress, and the defendant hired her to be Blanche in the classic A Streetcar Named Desire. Turns out the defendant was a kook who had no real experience on how to run a production, and she quit. Now the defendant owes her $1,804.94 for travel expenses and paid rehearsals, and she's received no money, so she's suing for it today. This is the defendant, Nicholas Long. He says the plaintiff's a very unprofessional actor who thinks she's God's gift to the world. Problem is, her attitude started getting in the way of his production, and he had to let her go. Months later, he was served with this absolutely ridiculous lawsuit. He certainly doesn't owe this woman a penny. She needs a major attitude adjustment, and perhaps the judge can shed some light on that today. He's accused of leaving a lot to be desired. All parties, please use your radians. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. The plaintiff is an actress, and the defendant hired her to be Blanche in a streetcar named Desire, but he was a nutcase. The defendant says he had to let her go because she thought she was Miss Thing. It's the case of, I Blanche, I guess I you. Thank you, Douglas. Precious Dixon, you are suing Nicholas Long and Knight Jasmine. Who's Knight Jasmine? Knight Jasmine is the name of the production company. Got it. And you are Nicholas Long? Yes for $1,804.94 that you say they owe you uh, for a production that you were involved in, but then according to you, you quit. According to her, you had to fire her. Tell me what happened. Um, so can I just start from the beginning of? Well, that's a very good place to start. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, I, we recently got in contact with each other through a site called castingcallprousa.com. Um, he had a casting on there for a web series that he was doing, a play, and his uh, perfume line. So I, d I submitted an online submission, of course. Um, he sent me an email on the 1st saying that he would like to cast me. Um, so I went to New York on the 3rd. Um, I met and him. You went at, to New York from where? From Boston. Okay. So I did the audition. Right. Um, it was kind of like an improv audition. Um, and then he let me know that, you know, for the cast members, they would have to pay, they would have to buy his, his perfume and the proceeds would go to a that charity. The cast members would have to buy his perfume? Yes. Okay. Um, it was retail $50. We had to pay 40 Okay. So I signed a contract for that, and also... Okay, um, where's the contract? Does the contract say here. something about the perfume? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Said artist agrees to purchase one bottle of Night Jasmine perfumes. All right, so go on. Um, so I, again, I gave him $40 that day. Um, then I went back to Boston. I came back. We started rehearsing. Everything was fine. Came the Well, 11th. let's talk about your contract first. The contract okay. that you signed says the following, that you were to get $25 for readings. Mm-hmm. $50 for photo shoots, yep. $75 for plays, musicals, for shows, really, for any shows, right. $100 for web series per episode, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so go on. So um, during the 11th, I was traveling back and forth, so I mentioned to him that, you know, with me traveling back and forth, it was getting really hard. I really didn't have a place to stay anymore. We discussed that through text messages. I let him know we can discuss it during rehearsal. So during rehearsal that day... Um, we discussed, like, you know, and he said that maybe he would be able to reimburse me for my hotel stays and my travel when I get Did my pay. Did you tell her that? I told her that I would try to work something out where I could have her stay somewhere in New York. She didn't want to stay with anybody that I suggested. Okay, but did you ever say something about... Uh, we didn't have a budget to pay her. Well, that's what I would think. That's why I'm asking whether you, I mean, it's her choice to come from Boston to New York. That's why I would find it strange for you to say that. Did you, did no. you have to say that because she was going to quit on you or did? No, no. She was making it seem like she needed a place to stay. Because so you of were the just trip. offering friends to stay with yeah. as opposed to yes. handing her cash. For, right. All right. So go on. So, and then thir during the 13th of January, things, that's when things started getting a little weird and I became a little suspicious of the whole thing. Um, we met at a Starbucks, a Starbucks instead for rehearsal. And that day of, he was- Wait, I'm sorry, you met at a Starbucks for rehearsal? Yes. So How were you gonna rehearse in a Starbucks? We that's rehearsed so upstairs. Um, there was like a room with a big table. All the cast members were there. That's so we they were around the table. You didn't actually get up and do your stuff and perform. No. So it was a table reading. Mm -hmm. Okay, go on. 
Um, so that day previous to arriving, he had texted me, asking me to bring him a bottle of red wine, that his stomach was hurting and it helped soothe his pain. Um, he didn't feel like standing in lines. I told him no. Um, he asked me to front him $10. I said no. So during that rehearsal, he gets a phone call or whatever he gets, and he has to step out for like, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes. He comes back and he says something about somebody passing away or whatever. And at the time, obviously, I was very sympathetic to it. I didn't think anything of it. Um, so after that rehearsal, I felt bad. So I did buy him a glass of wine. We went you're to- You're suing for the glass of wine? Yeah, that's included in there <laughs> I too. I know, why I'm you're sorry. suing for the glass of wine if you felt bad and decided to buy somebody a glass of wine? Because after everything happened, and again, as I continue further with things that have happened, I realized that he was just completely scamming me. Okay. Um, according to you, you had 17 rehearsals? Yes. And he didn't pay you for any of them? No, he hasn't paid me for anything. Okay. According to you, you have transportation and hotel expenses. Mm -hmm. According to you, you quit. Mm -hmm. When did you end up quitting? Um, I believe it was January 30th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any text messages or emails or anything that document how you quit? Um, no, it's just me and him going back and forth. On the text? And, yes, and then I Talking about what, getting paid? Um, getting paid, he was talking about how I had a bad attitude. Um, I was telling him how he was very unprofessional because how the argument started was he was saying, um, how do I plan to be a professional actress if I never get back to him? And I told him that I was busy. I always get back to you when I can. I was, I was running around the city trying to find places to say. I said, I always get back to you when I can. And that's how it started. Okay, but, yeah, so but I was already suspicious before that. When we first got to the rehearsal location, everything just seemed really shady and suspicious, and I kind just kind of bush league, see... like you just didn't see that it was. Yeah, no. Where did you think and, you were performing? Like, uh, uh, where was the performance going to be eventually? At the place where we were rehearsing, in the, which was a what? restaurant, the Italian restaurant on Madison Avenue. Okay, so it's not like you thought you were going to be on Broadway. You no. understood that I mean, this I, was a no, low budget, yes, of you course, know, whatever. Definitely. According to you, yes. it was your first time, your first gig in New York or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can handle the Italian restaurant, but not the Starbucks. Like, tell no, me. No, I know. I never said anything. about I need about to know why. Thing. Okay, I need to know why you quit. Give me the reason why because you quit. Because I realized that this this whole thing, him being unprofessional with me. Everything, like I was completely stressed out. Like, yes, it was my decision to commute back and forth to New York. And I and originally I would not be suing him. Well, to your pay contract for my doesn't call for transportation or exactly. hotel. Exactly, it does not. So if someone says, I'll work with you, that's that's not a contract that you can sue on. You're I suing for three, that. well, you don't, because yeah. you're suing for $340 in transportation expenses, $537 in hotel expenses, and $348.15 in food expenses. Why would he so, have to pay that? He wouldn't, and that's the well, thing that I, I was for it. saying, because after all of this, after going back and forth with him, there was even one point I said to him, okay, just give me my money back for the perfume. You did and, say that. Yes, in text messages. And I said, And then he didn't, so now you're angry, else. so now you're throwing in everything but no, the kitchen I'm sink. No, I'm not angry. Did she quit, or did, she, or did, she, or did you fire yeah, her? She was terminated. Oh, so you we, did fire her. We were, um, we got kind of close. We were hanging out, friends, so... At the time when we were at Starbucks, the restaurant had booked an event there that night, and I still wanted to have my reading with my cast. So that's why we was in Starbucks. It wasn't like we was having rehearsals in Starbucks. And I told her via text, um, I'm just going to have to let you go. You don't have to come to rehearsal tonight. You're terminated. So I don't know where she thinks that she quit. Also, the contract, we never agreed to pay for rehearsals. Stage readings is a performance. It's not you get paid every time we rehearse. She, they all, she was well aware that we did not have a budget. But how do you pay for readings? What your contract says, and I did find that odd, it says $25 for readings, and the word rehearsal isn't even in there. The stage reading is a ticketed, it would be a ticketed event. We ah. charge for stage readings. Ah. So there's a budget for it because people pay for tickets to see the stage reading. Yes, and I, I did have advertisers and, and sponsors. And nobody's buying uh, tickets for the stage reading in the Starbucks, though. No, there, this, we never had a stage reading. Okay. If so we were to have a stage reading, she would. that's the agreement that okay. we paid so for Okay, so the Starbucks was a rehearsal, and the other stuff at the Italian restaurant was also a rehearsal. Yes. And you're not paying for rehearsals. Right. And it's accurate that the... Contract doesn't say anything about rehearsals. 
And um, the, about the wine, I, somebody did die that day, and everybody. I, do you think really think you need to say anything about the wine? Okay. Oh, please. Because I, I tried to offer her the money back. She told Are me you no. kidding me? Please stop. Okay. All right. So, what about the photo shoot? We didn't talk about the photo shoot. According to you, you were there two days for a photo shoot. Yes. Um, no, we did a photo shoot for um, the overall play and a photo shoot for his perfume. Okay. And mm -hmm. what, so, what about that? She did two photo shoots, and according to the contract, you owe her a hundred bucks, fifty bucks for each photo shoot. She told me to keep the money. She just wants a refund for the fragrance. Boy, you should have jumped at that, because then we wouldn't be here. You I, didn't give her the money for the fragrance. No, I What's the problem with giving her the money back for the fragrance? You never gave her the fragrance. Right, because I was going to meet her the next day when she said it. I wound up being in the hospital. She sends me texts, oh, I'm suing you. You, you I'm like, I just got that. I, I can still meet up with you. No, it's too late. I'm suing you. So she said the deal was off. OK. So are actors and actresses as a group generally flaky? I think that it doesn't matter what your occupation is. I think it matters on the individual person. And if that person is a flaky person and they also have to be, they also happen to be an actor and actress, that's just unfortunate. That was a roundabout way of not answering. Are they flaky or not as a group? Just generally. Yeah. <laughs> you see how easy that was? <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. So you definitely owe her 40 because she never got her perfume. You definitely owe her 100 because we've established that. And what is the remaining uh, stuff? Food expenses, a glass of wine, no. Hotel expenses, transportation expenses, no. So really, the last thing we're she at is rehearsal. Now, his explanation is, look, the, the table reading is a ticketed event where a I actually have reading. been to one of those where everybody's reading. at a podium, a stage reading. Everybody's at a, a podium and they're doing it. It's actually kind of cool to watch. Um, and so he would have a budget to pay you guys because it, that's it. But it does not say a word about being paid for rehearsals. Did you have any stage readings? So what I was told was that that was for rehearsals. Again, no, I can't it was prove not that for because it was something verbal. So yeah, I'm all about the contract. And um, if you're suing under a contract, you can't come in here demanding to get paid the stuff that's not in the contract. And neither rehearsal, transportation, hotel, or food expenses are in the contract. So I am going to order the, re the payment of the $100 for the two photo shoots and $40 for the perfume for a sum total judgment in your favor, not of $1,804, but of $140. That is my verdict. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff prevails, but she doesn't get nearly what she was seeking. Mr. Long, I have a question for you. It never came up, came up in this case. How can you charge somebody for a product to audition? Um, it was not me charging. It's a campaign. It was a fragrance campaign, and it was a new fragrance, and it was not me charging. This was... They had to buy the perfume in order to audition? Is that right? No. If we selected them, that was the agreement according to the contract. If you selected them for the part, then they had to buy they the perfume. They were a part of a fragrance campaign. Something doesn't even sound legal. I don't know. I've been in the entertainment business a long time. I've never heard anything like that. But in any event, maybe you got away with something. I don't know. But thank you very much. You're Sorry. welcome. Okie dokes. Take thank care. Thank you. <laughs> now here comes Precious Dixon out. I got to ask you, is that your real name or is that a it stage is. name? No, it's my real name. It is real? Yes. Congratulations. What a lovely <laughs> name. You. You're a lovely lady. Thank you. Sorry you didn't win the whole thing. You, you satisfied? Have you learned um, anything from this experience? I definitely learned something, but no, I'm not satisfied because he's a scam artist. All right. Well, I think he's you learned a lesson then. people for I don't know how long. Yeah. Well, then you learned a good lesson. I did learn okay. a good lesson. Thank you so much. Thanks. You must sign a few documents. What do you think about that, Harvey? Something sound unusual in this case to you? Yeah, I do think it's weird, Doug. I, I got to say one quick thing, that when you make a deal with somebody, do not ever rely on your assumptions that the other person is thinking what you're thinking. That is what leads to lawsuits.